Hello Internet, welcome to the channel, my name is Frankie and in today's video we are building a rather small and simple habitat for the Thompson Gazelle. So for those of you that have been watching the Floki Wildlife Park series, you may remember that the last building that we built was the gift shop, the massive souvenir shop that it took quite a bit of work and that it's still having some issues. Every time I load the game, I have to delete the gift shop and then replace it in order to make sure that the guests that are stuck inside there can get out and their new ones can enter and the staff get in and all that. It's a little bit annoying, but at the end of the day, it is just a small thing I need to do to delete and replace. Um, getting a bit distracted there. The point was, behind the gift shop, there's a bit of space and I thought I would try and fill that with a smaller habitat. Now, if I hadn't already built for the aardvarks, this would be a good spot for them because they're quite small and don't require too much area. So when deciding what animal was going to go in this area, what I did was I went to the Zoopedia that is in the game, which allows you to see all of the animals and their requirements and stuff. And I chose one of the African animals that have slightly less land requirements, meaning that I can utilize this space and have more than just like one animal in here. Uh, one species though, I just mean more than one individual. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the chain link fence to create a very simple barrier. We're not going to have it be anything fancy because whatever's going in here is going to be a fairly docile animal, not something that is ferocious with massive teeth and stuff. In fact, we're actually going to be putting the Thompson's gazelle in here. So chain link fence is going to work perfectly fine. I'm going to try and link that to the back of the gift shop the best I can. I can't get it exactly perfect, but that's okay. And then once we do get the chain link fence in place, we can switch over to the null barrier and just bridge the gap between the two chain link fence areas, ensuring that this area does actually register as a habitat and that the Thompson Gazelle won't be just wandering into the gift shop, which would, um, I think it would be kind of entertaining, but I somehow feel like the guests wouldn't really like that. After another brief look at the Thompson's Gazelle Zoopedia entry, I found out that the height requirement for the barrier is only 1.25 meters, meaning that the barrier that I put in place already can be dropped a little bit, can be made a little bit shorter, which is going to make for a better viewing experience for our guests, so I'm just going to adjust the height of that. Next we're going to create our water source, and we're not going for anything fancy, it's literally just going to be a really small pond. And to do that, I'm just going to use the push tool to get it to a depth that I want. Then I'm going to use the flatten to foundation tool to make sure that it's all at the same level so that the water kind of is the same depth all round. I can then use the smooth tool to make sure that the edges aren't too spiky. Like you can kind of see on the left there, it's quite jagged because of where the barrier um, fence is. It kind of disrupts the flooring. So yeah, we can add water and then look, our first animal has arrived. And I've got to say, these guys are very charming. There's something about having gazelles in particular that, I don't know, it unlocks an inner child, I think. They're one of those animals that I instantly think of when I'm thinking of the African plains. Yes, you've got your zebras and wildebeest and stuff, but there's something about the antelopes, those tiny little gazelles. There's something about them that is just so cute. I really, really like them. Okay, so then we can move on to the terrain distribution needs of this animal. And thankfully, it wants quite a lot of short grass. I don't really like the long grass. It bothers me. It just doesn't look right, in my opinion. So I'm quite happy to use quite a lot of short grass in this habitat. As always, to try and meet the soil needs, I will try and concentrate mainly around the water source where the uh, grass won't be growing on the bottom of the pond that doesn't make any sense so you've got the opportunity to use some soil there it just adds a little bit of realism to it and then i can just use the short grass everywhere else for the plants i'm basically going to delete everything that was already here um by just going over to the plant tab and quickly deleting the items that are in red which was all of it basically except for the din grass the or gin grass i'm not sure is it like genie grass is it that kind of gin um, yeah, I'm talking too much, aren't I? Uh, yeah, I didn't actually need to delete that grass, but I wanted to start from scratch, so I did so anyway. I'm going to use a couple large boulders here to create a kind of rocky outcrop right in the middle of this habitat. 
Um, we really don't have much allowance for coverage with this animal. They don't want loads and loads of plants. So to combat that, I'm going to use a few more rocks. I'd kind of have that be a bit of a feature. I'm going to use two really large rocks from the savannah biome. And then I'm going to use some faux rocks from the aquatic pack just to decorate a little bit, to add a little bit of variation in terms of size and stuff. I'm going to have some on the bottom of the pond and around the basis of the rocks just to imply that these things have been broken down a little bit over time and kind of tumbled away. For actual plant life in this habitat, I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm going for the umbrella thorn African tree which in my mind is a very stereotypical African tree. I really like the wide canopy that creates a lot of shade for the animals. This would be excellent in the African plains, surviving, uh, surviving, providing a lot of shelter for our animals. That would be really good. So in my head, that tree is an essential for kind of a grassland theme um, habitat. I'm then going to reintroduce the Drin grass from earlier, which it turns out was nothing like Jin. I just imagined that there was a J in that word for some reason. Uh, I'm going to just kind of erratically spread this about. There's not too much rhyme or reason. I want a few clumps closer together because obviously it would grow a bit. Uh, it wouldn't be too spread out, I guess. Yeah, there's not too much reasoning for this. I'm just spreading this grass all over the place, making sure that we're not going too far over the plant distribution needs of this animal. I like to try and keep it as much in the green as possible as the welfare of the animals is really important to me. I don't really care about the guests that much to be honest. I would much rather prioritize the animals needs. Now we're going to move over to the shelter and I'm going to be trying to stick to the African uh, style. We're going to be using things from the African theme for building materials and I'm going to try and create a basic oval kind of oblong shape habitat house which is just going to be made from mud walls we're going to use two mud curved walls either end and then bridge the gap with uh, some straight four by four pieces just to kind of bridge that gap as i've already said uh, but i'm actually going to use the ones with a shop front window hole in them uh, just for a bit of ventilation the, these animals are living in a very hot climate they need a bit of air a bit of flowing air to cool them down. I'm also going to use the uh, curved piece with a doorway in it for the animals in order to get inside the habitat house. Normally I would try and create quite a large entrance, kind of like an archway, but these animals are so small they can use a standard doorway which is really useful. I'm also going to chuck a couple shop canopies above the windows that I've got on this habitat house. Initially, I was just going for a really basic mud hut, and it is fairly basic. The end result is really simple, but I end up using a couple more decorations, such as these canopies and a few shields that I hang on the wall inside, just to kind of suggest that maybe it's not something that's been purposefully built for these animals, but instead was a hut that people used to live in, and these animals have taken up residence. For the roof we're keeping it nice and simple and we're just using some thatch roof pieces that are going to mirror the footprint of the building that we've already established with the mud walls and stuff. So we're going to be using two of the rounded pieces either end and then we're going to use some two standard thatch roof pieces. In order to further push this African theme that we've got going on I'm going to use some decorative pots and mask the posts of the fence. This was a kind of a eureka moment for me, being able to alter the look of these fences in such a simple way without having to make the custom fence is really useful and it's something that I think I'll be using throughout the Africa zone in places that I don't want to put loads of effort into making a custom fence. It just instantly sets it apart a little bit, it doesn't look like the uh, chain link fences that are being used in the temperate zone, it looks distinctly African. It looks like it belongs in this African zone. So this is a really cool method just to mask these fen fence posts and make it look a little bit more unique. I'm also going to add a couple habitat education boards and for a change I'm going to be using the ones that are on legs. Normally I attach these to the barriers at an angle so that you kind of just read them kind of looking down at them but I kind of fancied them being up a little bit. I feel like they wouldn't exactly look right sat on a chain-linked fence 
I don't know, the flimsy metal, it doesn't seem like it'd be able to support this massive TV screen. But this does give me the opportunity to use the African Educational Zoopedia frames, which I haven't used before. Uh, what these are, are frames that are have been created by Frontier that you can put on your education boards, making them seem a little bit more thematic. And I think it does work. It makes them massive. It really does extend the footprint of these screens, but it does allow them to blend in to this themed area quite a bit easier. I think it would look better if it was on a wall. When they're on legs like this, it does seem quite random that they are this large. So I'm not sure how often I'm going to use it in this way. If I build a habitat kind of like how we did for the Siberian Tigers, where it had a designated viewing gallery, then I think it would work to have it mounted on the wall with this frame around it. I think that would look really good. But yeah, for now, I don't think this looks too bad. It's just a, it's just a bit big, isn't it? That's all. Back inside the habitat, we're going to make sure that our gazelle have some lovely fluffy bedding to lay on. And we're just going to use the um, habitat bedding, the hay. We're just going to use that and plaster it all over the floor of our mud hut. I'm going to use various sizes to make it look a little bit more real, I guess, because it's more spread out in little piles rather than just this one massive area. It's going to be moved about by the animals as they walk around. So having smaller piles just makes a bit more sense. Whilst we're in the habitat house, I'm also going to add a webcam up in one of the corners, except this doesn't have corners because it's got rounded edges. You know what I mean, it's going on a wall up high so that we can see the animals. This will help with your marketing rating for your zoo without you having to take out an ad campaign or something. And I like the idea that people at home get this view. It's really cool that they could uh, have a little pier inside your habitat houses and see the animals sleeping and relaxing. Now it's time to make sure that our animals can be fed because at the moment they don't have a feeder. So we're going to pop down a food trough and then we're going to whack all of our enrichment items into this habitat as well. Annoyingly, due to the size of the habitat, I couldn't make the scratching posts or scratching trees fit anywhere. They need to have suitable area around it for the animals to be able to interact with it. And unfortunately, just due to how I've built this habitat, I couldn't get it to fit anywhere. But I did get to use my hanging graze feeder trick, which is where I sink the main post inside of a tree. So it looks like it's actually coming off the tree rather than just this weird L-shaped chunk of wood inside the habitat. I think it looks a lot nicer like this. It blends into the environment a bit more and just looks a little bit more natural, which I really like. It was at this point that I realised that the research for our aardvarks was complete, which meant that I'd unlock the little termite mound. So we're going to pop those in their habitat because I feel like it's an essential piece of enrichment for these guys. It's like having anteaters without a similar, su similar structure. They need this kind of thing because it is the most natural way for them to feed. So I'm going to pop a couple of these termite mounds in here for our adorable little aardvarks to feed from. And the last thing that I need to do for the Thompson Gazelle is to add a few heaters. And as always, I sink them slightly below ground because I hate how they look and don't think they look nice anywhere. So it's best to have them hidden. This zoo does get snow, so it's important for this Africa zone to remember to put these heaters in. Because otherwise we're going to have like frozen warthogs and that's just not a good look. Speaking of snow, uh, the penguin population has got a little bit out of hand. There are so many all of a sudden. This started with 10 penguins. I'm not entirely sure how this happened. Well, obviously I know how it happened. They were mating loads and having lots of babies. But I did not realise quite how many there are. There are over 100. So, yeah. We're going to have to trade some of them out of the zoo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep anyone that has a coloured badge next to their name. Um, the... I'm not entirely sure what you call it. The little... Ribbon, the appeal ribbon, yeah. If it is bronze, silver or gold, I'm keeping them. If they're pregnant, I'm obviously keeping them. If they're juveniles, I'm obviously keeping them. Anyone else, I'm going to trade out. I'm going to set them free, send them to the wild and start to cut down on the population of our penguins because it is getting a little bit out of hand. 
Our Thompson Gazelle habitat is now done, but before we get on to some cinematic stuff, I really quickly wanted to show you the baby aardvark because it is adorable. I initially thought it was going to be in its burrow, but it's not, so it took me a little while to actually find it. This little guy is pretty well camouflaged, but there he is. Look how cute! Oh, this is so cute. I just want to play with their ears. There is something about aardvarks. I just want to give them a big cuddle and play with their ears. They are so damn cute. Lastly, I would just like to thank everybody for supporting the channel. The channel has really been growing quite quickly and I am very, very grateful for all of you that are subscribing and watching my videos. It really does mean a lot. And if you know other people that you think would be interested in the channel, please make sure to share the videos. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers currently. It's my current goal and we are getting there. And it's, I am really, really grateful for any support that's being shown. And what you're seeing on screen right now is the kind of roundabout in the middle of the zoo ignore the protest though that was to do with the penguins before i realized how many damn penguins we had um what we're seeing at the moment is the roundabout in the middle of the zoo i've been decorating that for each section of the zoo there is a series of rocks and statues and plants that represent that area now i'm going to have this kind of built the speed build here i'm going to have that be available on the channel to any members if you'd like to become a member, you can press the little join button next to my name down below the video and you'll be able to sponsor either the Red Panda or the King Penguin. I'm then going to be constructing boards outside these animal habitats that will be featured at the end of each video showing the names of the channel members. There was obviously no pressure to do this, but you will get behind the scenes access and the occasional extra video like this one. So thank you so much for having watched this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this appearing in your subscription feed. Thank you for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.